Hi, this is Steve from Wacky Lamps, and this tutorial will show you how you can build Pipe Man the Lover, the lamp kit. So welcome to this tutorial in which you'll be able to build this wonderful Pipe Man the Lover lamp using the kit here. Now you may have already bought the kit, in which case thank you very much indeed, that's great, and you will have the full pictorial instructions in the kit, uh, but this tutorial is aimed at giving you just that bit of comfort, that extra confidence that you're doing it entirely correctly. And if you haven't bought the kit, then please you can go and buy one from wackylamps.co.uk, go and check out uh, shop there and see what other things we have on offer for you. But this tutorial will be done from an overhead camera angle so you'll be able to see in detail exactly how to piece the lamp together. And I'll take it nice and slow for you. Any pieces that um, will take a while to do, maybe stripping the cables, um, we will obviously show you how to do that and then fast forward to when it's done. So we don't want to um, keep you too long from getting on with building your kit. So the first thing to do is to unpack your kit and let's have a look at what you've got. Well, all the metal components here are the galvanized iron, malleable iron um, pipe fittings. So you'll have various sorts of these. You've got one of them which is already drilled out for the cable to go into. This is the T for the, uh, the bottom section of the torso. These are your 90 degree bends as they're commonly called elbows. And those are called female, female elbows. And these are female, male elbows. Female is the socket there, male is the thread there. You've got hexagonal nipples, which are equal hexagonal nipples. So the same half inch size, both sides. Uh, you've got the chest piece, the cross, which is for the chest of the pipe man. And these are called barrel nipples. These are to make up the arms and the legs. You've got a switch here. You've got two meters of three core black insulated cable. You've got a three amp plug. You have a brass light fitting bulb holder with a ceramic contact housing there and you have got your tube your plastic tube into which you will put your flower for pipe man the lover at the end so when you're making up the kit a couple of things to notice first of all on some of the threads you'll notice a little bit of rust don't worry about that this is an industrial type lamp you're making uh, you can just get a wire brush and brush that off but I think it adds to the, the lovely industrial nature of the lamp. It's going to do no harm at all. Um, but if you're a bit concerned, just get a little wire brush and brush that off. Your hands will get a bit dirty whilst you're uh, making the lamp because these are pipe fittings. So there's naturally a little bit of grease inside the threads. So you could wear gloves if you wanted to. I, I tend not to. I like to feel what I'm doing. Um, you will need a few things to um, help you along the way, a few tools. Um, first of all, you will need a couple of these, which are adjustable spanners. Now, these are very good for clamping on to the components you're trying to tighten up. Um, you could use one pair of these and a bench vise. If you're lucky enough to have a bench vise in your garage, um, I've got one in my workshop here that I use occasionally, but usually you can do it quite easily with two adjustable spanners. You will need a large flathead screwdriver, and I'll tell you that can be very useful just on some of the components for getting that final twist with a spanner on one end and the screwdriver on the other. We'll see that in use later on. You will need a small electrical flathead screwdriver, like that there. 
you will want a craft knife, something very sharp to strip the wires with. This is a little scalpel used for crafting. And you'll need a small pair of wire cutters to cut the cable um, in order for you to strip the wires. So just a few basic tools there that you need. So you will notice that on some of the components there are slight irregularities. That's down to the nature they are industrial components. So um, they're all this batch is all pretty well um, the same, but you never know what you're going to get from a supplier. But I think that adds to the quality. None of us are the same. <laughs> and pipe man varies in his various guises so um the plug here has got a three amp fuse already fitted that's important to note a lot of plugs you buy have 13 amp fuses and you have to change them for three amps so that's the basic um kit that you get and now we're going to go through in various stages how to assemble this to make pipe man the lover and the first thing we're going to do is put his legs together So here are the components that you will need to assemble pipe man's legs. You've got two reducing sockets there, two 90 degree elbows, two barrel nipples, two of the male female 90 degree elbows, and two of the equal hexagonal nipples. So, first of all, we can do the bottom part of the legs. So that's the foot there we're calling it, and this is the, the, uh, the leg bone there. So screw them up. For the moment, those will be fine, just done finger tight, as I call it, or hand tight. We're not gonna be joining all the sections together at the moment, and I'll tell you why in a short while, but that's the two leg sections there. And now we need to make up the top of the legs where it joins the torso. So we screw one of the hexagonal nipples into one of the elbows like that. And then we add the other 90 degree to that. And these need to be really, really tight. But they also need to be slightly off centre because what you're going to have is that's going to be in to Pipe Man's body and the bottom leg is going to be angled inwards. So we need to make sure there is just a slight angling. I don't know if you can see that there. A slight angling of this out here. It's not perfectly straight. And then you've got to do the other leg. Uh, of course, the other leg needs to be in the opposite way. So this is something that's quite easy to forget to do, is to make you make them exactly the same. And of course, you want one the opposite way. So once again, at the moment, these can go together just using your hands. But sometimes you're going to try and find the start of the thread like that. But you need this one to be the opposite. So it's let's just compare the two. So that one you've got the leg going that way. So this one's got to be tightened up even more. So it's got to go around. So here is where we could use the screwdriver here because I want this to go around a bit more. So if I put the screwdriver in there and pull it round, you see it actually moves it round quite well for you. So you've now got two going in the opposite direction. That's probably a bit too far, so you can move that back a little bit. You can do final adjustments later on in the build. But at the moment, yeah, you've got those going pointing in slightly opposite directions, so that's good. So those are your two leg sections ready to put aside. So here are the components you need to make the top sections of Pipe Man's arms. These are the bits that go into his shoulders. So you've got one of the 90 degree elbows, which you're going to screw in one of the hexagonal barrel nipples. 
and then on the end of this we're going to put the arm onto which eventually you will put the T to hold the flower. At the moment those can be just done up with your hands quite quite tightly. This is the other arm which is going to go behind Pipe Man's back. So once again you take one of the 90 degree elbows and insert the hexagonal nipple and onto here we're going to screw the male female 90 degree elbow. Now if you recall from looking at the pipe man himself, I'll show you the box lid here, we see that he has one hand slightly behind his back. So we have to think about the angle of this. So this is again where it's useful to use the screwdriver just to bend him around. So if that's into the torso, that as you can see is going to be slightly angled behind him. So those are the two arm sections already done. We can put those for the moment to one side. So here are the pieces you now need to make Pipe Man's torso. So this is where we start to thread the cable up through. So this is the T piece that I mentioned at the start that's already been pre-drilled for you and a rubber grommet inserted to prevent any chaffing of the cable on the inside of the metal. So the idea will be to push the cable into there. So we'll just push it into there for the moment and put it to one side. You've then got the main back, the backbone of, of um, Pipe Man. You've got the chest area and you've got the neck, which basically is this, again, one of the very useful hexagonal equal nipples there. So you could fumble around and try and get the cable up through there, but I would advise if you can just grab a small pair of long nose pliers, grasp and pull through the cable like that. And then just pushing it gently, you don't want to disturb the grommet, pushing it gently you can then pull the cable through without doing any damage to the cable at all because you're not rubbing it against sharp metal. So I suppose about eight, nine inches is good to start with. We can adjust that in a short while. So then you thread the barrel nipple on, then the chest cavity, chest cavity, the chest, and then the neck. So that's what you will end up with is that little collection there. And when you've made sure you've got them in the right order, you can then start to join them up. You join them up. It's easy to thread them onto the cable rather than try and thread the cable onto them or up through them, should I say. Again, as tight as you can, you can do some final tightening up later on. Now, when you screw in the cross piece there, which is in effect his chest, then you need not worry about which way around it ends up. You've got the logo, manufacturer's logo on one side, and you've got the, the half inch symbol on the other. That just indicates that it's half inch pipe we're using. So whichever you can get really tight on there, and in fact, that will turn out that the half inch is showing forward, but it doesn't really matter at all. And then the neck, of course, screws into here. You have to try and locate the start of the thread on these. It's not always first time. Um, and then again, for the moment, just doing it by hand. Or if you wanted to use a small pair of pliers, if you haven't got a very strong grip, then that's fine. You can find you can get an extra little bit of purchase with these adjustable pliers. So that is the torso already there. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually wire up the end here. We're going to sort out the wiring and put the bulb socket on the end here with the head. So that's the next thing we're going to do. So here's the collection of components and tools you'll need in order to wire up the head of Pipe Man. So first of all, you think, well, how much cable should be protruding from the end of the neck here. Well, actually it should be four inches, or um, if you're 
really into decimalisation, <laughs> which we should be, I suppose, 10 centimetres, 100 millimetres, 10 centimetres, or in old money, for us old is four inches. That's plenty. Now, you thread the cable through the head section, which is, of course, one of the 90 degree elbows, and locate the threads correctly and screw them on there like that. Now, I wouldn't at this stage screw this up too tight because we do need a little bit of purchase for the head. Um, so I'm probably going to take that back a little bit and see how it, because we need to be able to angle the head, the neck a little bit so that we may need to go around a bit further. I'm not sure at the moment, but uh, we do need to be able to um, angle the head so that it's not pointing towards the flower when ultimately we get that to that stage. So we'll have a look at positioning of the head in a short while. So that's that. Now we look to the cable at the end here and how we go about preparing this to go into the bulb holder. So this is where your very, very sharp craft knife or scalpel comes into operation. And you've got to be very, very careful with this. Careful, obviously, for your own personal safety, but also careful not to cut right through the black insulation here to cut into the three cores of the wires beneath. And if you've got a little bit of cable uh, you can practice on, in fact, the two meter cable we give you is actually a little over two meters. So you could actually start on the other end and just practice removing this um, insulation coating. So I'll show you how we do it here, how I do it, is if you bend, if you hold the lamp head with one hand and bend the cable over and then just where it enters the lamp socket here, if you just gently cut a little bit into there, you don't have to do much if it's a very sharp scalpel, and then you can in fact bend that over. And what you will find when you bend that over, I'm going to push a little bit more through here, so I've got a bit more purchase. When you bend it over, you'll find, as you can see, the wire coating is starting, the insulation is starting to split. We haven't gone down to the other wires, and so it's basically just a matter of working your way around. Now, you see that second cut has opened up the wires beneath, but we haven't gone into them. So it's just really just gently cutting through that black insulation there and we're nearly there cut that around again but do be careful because you're using a very very sharp knife here you even, if it's very sharp scalpel blade you've only got to re-rest the blade on to the black material and it will in fact cut through and there we are we're right through we haven't cut into those three core cable the three individual cables that make up the three core cable and we can now pull off there. You notice that these are chalked inside to make it easy for them to, to move when they're building the cables. So now you've got your um, cable there through as far as you need it. Now I pulled this through so I'm going to pull it back a little bit there as you can see just so I've got my, my four inches at the end there. In fact it's more than four inches now because we've taken, we put the head on afterwards so you've got just really the bad cable. So I'm tightening it up again around there. In fact, I'm going to move this around with my screwdriver because the other neck end here started to move. So you will find that, there we are, you will find that um, some of the components will start to loosen a little bit after you've tightened them. And that is why we don't use WD-40 on the threads because that will keep them loose. It'd be so difficult to tighten them up completely if you put WD-40 or any other lubricant on those threads. So avoid doing that and just use some elbow grease or your vise or the two adjustable spanners to do that. Or as I say, one large flat head screwdriver holding one end and forcing it round. Again, be careful not to um, damage yourself when you're doing this. Just be careful. Right, so there we have it. So now we have to um, strip the ends of these cables. And what we'll need to do now is to push the top here, which is the um, base of the bulb holder, put the wires through there, because this will give us an indication of how much of the cable we need through how, many of the, how much length of wires we need. On the end of the bulb holder, I've already put for you the brass bush, which screws into 
the um, top here to the head. So this in effect makes the face of Pipe Man. You can screw that quite tight, so that's not going to need it to come off again, like that. So now we have to um, look at this, which is the ceramic bulb holder base, which contains the connections which you're going to put onto here. So already we can see we've got plenty of space. And if I was to connect those up as it is, you've got a lot of forcing of the wire back down there to try and accommodate it. So I know that we can cut those off at about the halfway point and still have plenty there. So I'm going to snip those off, leaving about three centimeters through the end there. There we are. So now you've got three wires there which are ready to be stripped. Two ways you can strip them. One way is using the scalpel blade, which I'll show you here now. So again, if you rest it on a surface and you cut round, you can cut through that again. We're cutting through that. We're not cutting into the cable beneath. It's just a matter of just gently pushing the scalpel blade around and enabling you then to pull off that piece there. Like that. Or I can show you a little tool that I use because I do a lot of this and that's one of these great gadgets which is a cable stripper. Which in fact strips it for you. <laughs> Slightly easier way but if you've only got one lamp to do don't invest in one of those just use very carefully your sharp craft knife. So now I always find that winding the wires together at the end gives you no loose wires to make it difficult to put them into the connections here. So let's have a look at what we've got here. What we've got here is the ceramic base. The ceramic is an insulating material, ceramic, so we're making sure that you've got three individual connections on here uh, which will make sure that they're completely isolated from each other. You've got the earth connection on the top there and that is connected to a little flap of metal here which as you'll see shortly will when you put it into the base of the lamp holder will touch the brass and will give you the earthing that you want for your lamp. It's very very important that this lamp is earthed. I know it's only three amps but it's um, a metal lamp and it needs to be earthed and that's how this lamp will be earthed through that earth connection there. The other two connections here are one of them goes to what will touch the side of the lamp, the side of the, the bulb bottom and the other one on which the bottom of the bulb will rest. So it doesn't matter which of these is connected to the neutral or which is connected to the live. It really doesn't matter as long as they're both independent. So first thing to do is to open up your connections here. I've already done it on these. Make sure you've got nice open holes in here. Apologies if I'm not finding the camera every time. Um, open holes here. So if you've got any thread of the little screw showing, get rid of that, open it up a little bit more. So you've got a free holes there to put the cables into. So now it's simply a case. I always do the earth terminal first. So holding that, I'll show you, it's difficult to show it to the camera exactly at the same time as I'm screwing it in. But I've connected the earth terminal with the earth wire, which is of course the green and yellow striped wire. Let's just do that up nice and tight there. So there you see the earth terminal is in there. And now it's a quick case then of locating the blue, which is the neutral wire into the hole that we're going to use for the neutral terminal and then closing that up nice and tight. And the other one, of course, is the live, which brings the power to this lamp holder. Put it down for one second while I locate it in there. And once you've got that located in your hole, you can do that up nice and tightly as well. And I'll show you this completed socket. Just if you give me a second. Thought I'd do this live for you rather than um, here's one we did earlier. There we go. Must make sure these are really tightly screwed in. 
I always double double check just to make sure you don't want any problem with them coming out. So there you have it. That's the completely wired, properly wired ceramic base of the lamp. So you've got your earth terminal, the live here and the neutral there. All go into the three terminals over here, which is the earth that will touch the bulb socket. You've got the piece that will touch the edge of the bulb and the base of the bulb. So now we have to locate this into the base here, this brass base here. And we do that to make sure, if I can find the earth terminal, you'll see on the brass ring here of the base, you have two little indentations. You've got one on this side and one directly opposite on the other side. And those are there to locate this, which is the earth terminal. If you remember me saying the earth terminal has to touch the bulb. So you push that in, it's quite a nice tight fit, and you push that in there. So if you can see there, if I point it out with my screwdriver, the earth terminal is definitely touching the edge of the bulb here, which is just perfectly okay. Just what we want. Now there's also another little piece of metal there, which is quite interesting, because this brass socket is um, a safety socket. And then it, once you've done it up, once you've screwed it together, it is difficult to unscrew it again. It's not impossible, there's just a little trick to it, but that's so, to stop anybody from unscrewing it and getting to the terminals while the, um, the light's on or while the, there's power going to it. So we're talking of small children maybe. So this is the top of the bulb holder. And you'll see there is um, a thread inside there and that actually fits onto there. So what happens as we screw this down, that little tiny piece of metal will get ratcheted against the side of the plastic interior of there. Now, I'll show you what that means in a moment. As I tighten that up, I can feel it clicking around and you can't undo it again. You can do it up more, but you can't undo it. I say you can't, you in fact can. And the way you do it is like this. Using a screwdriver, you find by looking down here, you find that little terminal, that little, um, not terminal, that little tiny piece of metal that was sticking out that I showed you earlier. Now, I don't know whether you're gonna be able to see it in here. I'll try and find it, but it's actually on that side there. And you just literally get a screwdriver under there and just bend it inward slightly and that stops it from catching against this so now you can undo the bulb holder again because I've bent that little bit of metal just in slightly so if for any reason you wanted to take it off or maybe you uh, oh did I really connect them up correctly you can you can take this off and have another look but I would then push that back across so you know that's going to lock itself, whoops, lock itself against that little, the piece of plastic in there, inside the bulb holder. So they push that onto there. There we are. So that's nice and tightly on there. So. That is your bulb holder in place there, um, all ready now for the next stage, which will be to attach um, the limbs of Pipe Man to this torso and head. So here we have the completed torso and head and the two upper sections of the legs. So we're going to screw these on. Now, this is where we have to get the angle right for both the torso and also for the legs. So trying to locate this hand here, can take a couple of goes. So just spin it around to start with and you'll feel it tightening up. And then you have to decide where it's going to go to. Now the idea is that we end up with um, a pipe man that has, if there is the vertical, you want about a 45 degree angle between the torso and the leg line there. 
So that angle there should be at least 45 degrees, even if it's a little bit more. That's just for stability, so that the lamp doesn't then tip over. So the idea is first to put both legs on, and then we do a bit of adjustment thereafter. So again, sometimes trying to find that biting point of the thread and wind those on. And again, right the way around. And this one's gonna take a little bit more of a, a move around with your hands. And I think this time we're going to need the adjustables. So this is where I'm going to use the adjustable spanner on here. And adjustable spanners are very good. The tension that they give to the piece is quite amazing. They hold on and of course if you've got it tightened up correctly it won't mark your metal either. And you can feel it biting there and click it down really well there. And then that gives you the purchase that you need to move that around. So now we've got the legs pretty much in the right place. Let's just check that. When they're up like that, he's leaning quite a bit backwards, which is fine. He might be leaning too far backwards. It doesn't really matter. We can adjust that later on. Um, my adjustable spanners are refusing to give him up which of course is just perfect. <laughs> so there we are. So for the moment, we're not going to put um, the, um, the arms on. We're just going to look and see how he looks from that point of view. So just get a look at that angle again to make sure you're happy with that. So now we can put the bottom leg sections on. If you remember, we've got these from earlier on, which have got the reducing socket and the barrel nipple for the leg and the foot. So we screw those on. Again, hand tight for these is okay, because we are gonna need a little bit of adjustment when we try and get them level. Don't worry at any point, by the way, if you find that the threads are different amount of exposure of threads. If you look here, you've got more thread there than there, and different to here and here. Don't worry about that. This is an industrial piece. You're never gonna get it perfect. Every piece is different. If you remember that these components were only ever made to be hidden underground. So they're not going to be perfect um, for the point of view of how much you can do the threads up. The idea is we're using them as a lovely um, industrial piece of lighting. So a little bit of maneuvering here and we've got him leaning probably too far backwards so I can move him up a little bit but we can adjust him a little bit later on. You might want him really quite far back. If not then you can just pull these legs down a little bit like this, just to ease that, that amount of backward lean, as it were. So I think we'll leave them at that for the moment. So there you can see the um, completed torso, the legs of Pipe Man already on. I'll move them around so you can see things like the angles, the way that the two feet touch each other quite nicely at the back there. Um, and now it's a case of giving him some arms. So you recall earlier on we made the uh, top part of the arms of Pipe Man and I've got them here. So the well, first one we're going to attach will be his right arm which was this one here that will have eventually the T-section on the end here to hold the flower uh, vase. So that just screws in to the top here. The important thing to note with this particular arm is that you want to end up with it being as horizontal as possible. So I'm pushing that down so it's pretty well horizontal, just so that the hand with the flower vase, you see that's pretty well horizontal on there. It's difficult to see on this camera. Um, and then the other arm, sometimes slightly more difficult to get aligned correctly, but we will screw him in here because this is where he has one hand behind his back in that lovely deference pose. So one hand behind his back and the other hand holding the flower. So this is where we need, if you remember, we put that slight angle on here so that it, when we do put the end of the arm on the other end, it's pointing behind his back. So that will push down quite well like that. I'm not going to push it all the way 
level with his back until we put the other pieces on. So now we have the bottom part of his arm and this is made up of a hexagon equal nipple and an end cap. So you can screw the end cap onto there like that. So your finger tight for this is okay. And we screw it on to there. Like that. So if you can see how it's gone on to there like that. Again, finger tight for that's all right. And we then need to push this back. So it's virtually touching his back. And this is also useful to use as a balance. So if you found your lamp because you hadn't angled him quite back as far as I have, if you found that he was um, leaning a bit or you think well, that's not quite stable, then just use this arm as a balance. Just pull it out a little bit more. And of course, you're putting more weight at the back there. But this is OK. So I'm pushing him right under there. OK, you can see his head is slightly to one side. This is so that he can be looking away. It also gives some character to Pipe Man to see him looking slightly away. Also, it serves the purpose, of course, of keeping, if you do have a hot bulb, keeping it away from the flower. So you don't want the flower wilting. Um, that's not the intention. So um, you can, of course, move the head back and forth a little bit as well. So there we have him all ready for his hand to go on. So here is the hand that will hold the final T. And this um, is, apart from the, the tube, the final section of Pipe Man to go on. So we screw that onto his hand there. You can see perfectly in line, tight up so it's vertical as well as horizontal. And that's all that remains now is to put the switch on and to wire up the plug. Now the switch, let's have a look at the switch position. Your switch position can go anywhere really along your cable, um, depending where you want it. But I would advise it to be at least four inches, 10 centimeters away from the bottom of his um, back legs there, sorry, his feet there, because you need a bit of room to maneuver with the switch. So let's get the switch and the electrical bits ready and we can get this switch wired in. So now we're going to wire up the switch. As you can see, I've cut the cable using these little wire cutters here, about four inches or so from the feet of the pipe man. Uh, so let's just undo the switch so you can see what you're dealing with. And um, we've chosen you a very simple switch, uh, what they call a, a one pole switch, just a simple off and on and pop these screws out of there. The top of the switch should come off, but it might need just a little easing with a screwdriver and it pops off. So here's the inside of your switch. You can see there's the switch, the off and on, and you've got clamps here to clamp the cable in place. That's very important. You don't want them pulling out inside the switch. And you've got the terminals here. These two here are the live terminals for the brown wire. And these here can be either for the neutral or the earth. It doesn't matter which. I'll be repeating this again in a moment just to make sure you've got it absolutely correct. So now we need to bear the wires and start wiring the switch. So there we have the wires all ready to offer in to the switch. You can see there I've paired the wires and the wires are at different lengths because the connectors in the switch are slightly different positions. As you can see here, we have the live terminal terminals. That's the brown wire. So one will go here to the plug and this will go into the lamp. Then you've got these two terminals here either side. Now you can put the neutral, which is the blue or the uh, yellow and green striped, which is the earth in either of those. As long as you put the same wire to the connector either side, it doesn't really matter. You're just bypassing the switch, which is in the middle here. And that switch there, of course, connects and disconnects those two brown live wires. So let's get those connected up now. It's a bit fiddly. So just, what I find is useful to do is to wind the ends 
of the bared wires together and then just push them in make sure you've got the holes in the connectors opened up as fully as possible so that you can oh, saying that I haven't done it on that one I can see a little bit of screw still in the hole it needs to be as fully open as possible in order to accommodate that wire there so now that should push into there perfectly there and make sure that these screws are done up as tightly as you can you don't want them pulling out so we've just got the brown and the blue one to do which we will do now so there you have one side of the switch all wired up as you can see the three wires go into their respective positions and I've clamped down the uh, clip on the side here to hold that black insulated wire in place so it doesn't move about so I said it is a bit of a fiddle sometimes to to get the wires in but take your time over doing it there's no rush to do it and now all we've got to do now is do exactly the same on the other side so there you have it your correctly wired switch and if I show you that a bit more closely you can see everything is nice and neat in there you've got the wires um, into the correct positions the brown one which is the live one going to the center terminal there on each side and the neutral which is the blue and the earth which is the uh, yellow and green striped going either side there it's very important to remember to uh, not cut off too much of the insulation here the black insulation otherwise you won't have enough to be caught by these two clamps I think worse than seeing um, a switch with wires coming out of the side the red the the, um, the brown the blue the yellow showing There's nothing wrong with that it just doesn't look very good and it's, it puts pressure on those three uh, wires so there we are so all that's um, left to do now is to put the top back on this and to wire the plug okay so i've stripped the wire for the plug in exactly the same way as we did for the bulb holder and for the switch um, taken off about um, three or four centimeters of the black insulation and allowed these to be different lengths because when you look at the plug itself here you'll notice it's further to the earth terminal at the top here than it is to the neutral or to the live so just to save any congestion of wires within the plug it's always best to cut these wires appropriately leaving the earth one a bit longer a little bit shorter on the uh, neutral and quite a bit shorter on the live so we also have the three amp fuse already in this plug that saves you having to go and get another three amp fuse because most plugs come with a 13 amp fuse fitted um, but of course we are dealing with uh, just ordinary table lamp so it only requires a three amp fuse so with a three amp fuse already fitted all you've got to do is to release the cable clamp here thread the wire through and connect up the live to the fuse terminal the neutral to this terminal and the earth to this terminal here so there you have the correctly wired plug you can see why it was useful to uh, cut the wires different lengths because there's no real congestion in here at all and where you've clamped down in fact I just need to tighten a bit more to make sure that that clamp is sufficiently clamped down on that cable there what you don't want is any movement of the cable within the plugs that might cause eventually one of these to come out of its connector these are all nicely tightened up so now we just pop on the plug top there and we are ready to test the lamp and add the finishing touches so there you have it a completed pipe man the lover lamp and there's just a couple of things left to do of course one is to add a bulb now there isn't a bulb included in your kit because we like you to be able to choose what sort of bulb you add to your lamp as long as it has a e27 screw thread that's the larger screw thread it will fit into the bulb holder there so we leave it to you to choose whether you want a filament bulb or an led bulb this particular one is an edison filament bulb 
Now, I prefer the filament bowls because they give a lovely warm glow. This is not your main lighting. This is feature lighting. You don't want it to be overpoweringly um, glaring. Um, this is a 40 watt uh, Edison filament bulb with a spiral f filament inside. Um, you can use LED, nothing wrong with LED at all, it's up to you. But I think the filament bowl gives it that nostalgic feel when we're thinking about this being a steampunk style lamp, which is of course the combination of Victorian industrial with modern day fantasy sci-fi, which of course the robot effect obviously is. So let's pop the lamp into the holder here. And we do them up there, not too tight. You don't want to break the bottom of the lamp, um, just finger tight so it's not moving around in there. And let's turn him on. And there we have it. Works perfectly well, of course. You can probably see the spiral nature of the lamp there. There we are. And one thing missing, of course, he wouldn't be a lover lamp unless he's got something to offer you as a token of love. And of course, that will be the flower that he's holding in his hand there. So the plastic tube that comes with your kit, I filled that up with water uh, to the collar there. The collar stops it from falling all the way through the hand there. Just rest nicely in there. And from the garden earlier on, I picked this wonderful rose here. So that's gonna pop in there, into the water down there. Any single stem flower will do that's good for cutting. And there you have it. He's ready to offer that love to anybody who will have him. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. One little word about the electrics on it. If when you try your lamp for the first time, it doesn't work and you've made sure the electric's turned on, um, you could try changing the fuse. I doubt very much whether the fuse would have gone. The, all the fuses that we send out are tested. Um, so don't try anything else. Seek the advice of a professional electrician. Um, or if in any way you're worried about whether you're doing the electrics correctly, even though you've watched the video and looked at the instructions in the kit, if you're in any way not confident, then do seek that advice from the electrician before you use your lamp. But he's fine. He's working fine. He's ready to light up someone's life. So please have a look at wackylamps.co.uk for more lamps we have on offer, both in kit form and ready-made. And I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for joining us and look out again for more of the videos on this channel. Take care. Mm -hmm.